When you are doing your project planning in structure, sometimes you need to deal with scheduling conflicts between several issues linked with dependencies. What are scheduling conflicts and how can you handle them? This is what we'll cover in this video. This video is part of our effort to provide best possible training around Jira, Confluence and whole Atlassian ecosystem. If you would like to support us, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below if you have any questions, and remember you can always reach out to us for one of our paid services like training, consultations, or implementations. Okay, so let's look at the structure. You can see that I have some structure over here. We'll look at those two tasks that are linked with dependencies. So at the moment, it seems there is no problem with them. One task is planned for a specific period of time, of time. it ends, and after it ends, the task starts, uh, the second one. Uh, if we click on that, we'll see that both of these tasks are in auto mode. This means that the start and end date of the task is set depending on uh, the estimate of the task, in my case, uh, and the dependencies. So the reason the ta task tests to start at this moment in time is because there is dependency with the uh, task task one and the task one starts uh, ends over here so in auto mode you in general shouldn't have any problems with scheduling conflicts the problem is that auto scheduling takes away a lot of flexibility so you're not actually able to move the tasks because you need to be in the manual mode uh, of, of scheduling. We've seen in one of our previous video how to set the uh, manual scheduling. Uh, you can go to configuration, go to scheduling and, uh, and set allow manual scheduling. This is not what we'll do today. We'll do a bit different setup. So we will go to slices. Uh, slices is something that we also covered in one of our previous video, but short overview. So it allows us to select particular issues from our structure and set a bit different configuration for them. So I will look at this new slice which basically takes all the issues from demo project one. So you can see that I have basically tasks or issues from two projects here. One is demo project DP and second one is demo project one DP one. So I'm taking all the tasks from demo project one and for them, I am setting that they will be scheduled manually. Uh, so this basically means that all the tasks from DP will still, still, still be scheduled automatically while the tasks from DP1 will be scheduled manually. So let's set that and let's enable this slice. Save and let's get back to our chart. So the configuration change was applied and right away you can see that something changed. Our task that had dependency with the earlier one was moved into the past. So basically now it doesn't really feel right because this task should be the following one while in reality it is, it is uh, set on the time, timeline earlier. This is what structure considers a scheduling conflict. So there is a dependency that would require task to be done in specific moment in time but task is done earlier or potentially later. Uh, so if we click on this task and, and you can see that there is a red line here above. This is structure informing us that there is a scheduling conflict. We can do something about that. So if we click on the task, yeah, we can see confirmation here that task is in manual mode. So it relies on the start and end date custom fields that we've seen in our slice configuration to set the task on the timeline. And we see over here information uh, that is indicated by this red line that there is a pot potential scheduling conflict. What can we do with that? Fortunately, Structure offers us pretty neat way to, to decide what to do. So if we click Resolve, there are two options over here. We can auto-schedule or respect link. What is the difference between the two? 
So respect the link will keep the task in manual mode. It will just update its start and end date. So let's do that. Respect the link. You will see that task was moved. It's in proper place on the timeline. There is no further scheduling conflict and it is still in manual mode. When to use that and when this can be useful. Uh, this can be useful if you still need flexibility of being able to move the task around. We'll do that in a moment. Uh, but you think that there will be no, f no future changes or at least not many changes triggered by the issue on which this one is dependent. Because if the end date on this issue will move into the future, because that this task is in manual mode, it will not be updated, we'll get another scheduling conflict. So we'll have to update this manually again. So if you need flexibility, you do not need auto update, you can click respect the link. Now let's, it's in manual mode, so we should be able to move it, let's do that. We will, we will cause another scheduling conflict. And now we can click Second option, out of schedule. Again, scheduling conflict was resolved. The issue is in proper place. But if we'll check it, you'll see that the mode was switched to auto. So all the future changes uh, coming from the change of the end date of, the, of, of our issue on which this one is dependent will be reflected in this issue. Okay, so now you can see and you know what kind of options do you have to resolve the scheduling conflicts coming from the start and end dates of the task and dependencies between them in structure. Uh, there will be more about scheduling conflicts, especially around task duration and their estimates. So keep an eye for, for new videos on our channel. And for this one, that will be it. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, if you wonder how this feature can be applied in your specific environment, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, we offer consultations, so I'm sure we'll be able to help you with any problems you might have. Thanks for today and see you in the next one.